His name is Lee Kendrick. He's a credit U-turn. Lee, I saw something about this today that they're going to use sort of a different formula to figure out your FICO score, uh, and it's kind of based on what's going on with the pandemic right now. I, it's something about credit that's readily available to you, or I forget exactly what it's called. So credit utilization, yes, credit utilization is a uh, hot topic right now um, through the pandemic because obviously there's a lot more uh, risk of default to credit card issuers. So they're taking a closer look at uh, who really deserves what limits. So as they take a look at that, Lee, what are some of the things that they're considering? So um, they, they've already been taking a lot of steps um, early on. Um, so they're looking at, uh, at your current usage. If your usage is spiking, um, it's sending a signal that's just automatic, uh, that's algorithm-based, uh, that's telling them that they need to take a closer look at you, that maybe they need to go ahead and look at a soft inquiry to see what your other credit uh, usage is beyond uh, that account to determine whether or not they need to um, limit your credit privileges, to roll back your uh, limits or maybe to uh, suspend your credit privileges altogether. So the more money during these kinds of times, the more you use your credit card for basic purchases, the more that might put a ding on your credit report. It, especially if it's uh, if it's out of the norm. You know, if you've been maintaining a certain balance, but all of a sudden your balance starts spiking or your other balances start spiking, um, you know, that it, it's a strong indicator that there might be an at-risk issues. And, uh, you know, the, the better credit card issuers are reaching out to you in some form or another or initiating a conversation uh, just to see whether or not um, – there's more to the story. Maybe it was a little temporary purchase and that you've got some cash and you're planning on paying it right back down. Um, obviously, they don't want to suspend somebody with excellent credit. But if, you, if you've got below excellent credit, you're probably getting a closer look at you and your credit privileges behind the scenes. And you might not even know that your credit limit has been slashed or suspended um, unless you've got a fantastic credit monitoring service that sends you an alert that says, hey, did you know that your limit's been reduced? Wow. So there's the, the, the credit card company has no responsibility to tell you that they have reduced your credit limit? Well, they, I mean, they will, obviously, whenever you get your account statements, and uh, but they don't have to scream it out to you in red letters or big, bold letters that says, hey, we just want to let you know that your uh, limit's been reduced. You know, uh, that's certainly not in place. Okay. <laughs> You'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> they gave you calls. It, it sure would. It, it sure would. There are a lot of things about credit agencies and reporting and uh, requirements such as that that uh, we're going to taking a stronger stand against ourselves, and we're trying to uh, create a movement and start a movement to uh, make uh, changes in uh, their practices above and beyond what's currently already in law. So, in in typical fashion, I guess uh, the easiest way to get credit is if you don't need it. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yes, it, you're you're very right. Yes, it is very much that way. If you if you don't need it, you've already exhibited that. Hey, you're you're a good risk. You've already got money in the bank. You've already paid down your other credit. So yeah, you're the better credit risk uh, than somebody that absolutely needs it at this moment in time. You're exactly right. Okay, so um, it, at this point, um, are they also? Because uh, I I know sometimes, for example, if, all it takes is one late payment. And it, especially during times like these, and I can see where you would run the risk of potentially having your interest rate upped on you as a result of that. How aggressive are, are the credit companies being as far as raising your rates? Oh, you're, you're spot on, especially right now. I think that uh, if you were to look at this like two years ago and you had a late payment, not as big of a deal. Obviously, you never want to be late, but uh, you then you add on all the layered risk and concern and uh, the, the billions of dollars that's at stake to each one of these credit card issuers, uh, it's a really big deal. So one late payment can just, like, not only impact you with that creditor, but it can just steamroll, snowball, like, right from the mountaintop, and it's an avalanche that just piles on top of you because, you know, just one credit card issuer takes that stance, and you've got a reduced limit that's impacting your scores, and then the next thing you know, you're triggering the same mechanisms and algorithms that are in place with every other credit card issuer 
and they start taking that same um, approach and utilizing, employing the same tactics uh, that impacted you in the very beginning, and it just it can really uh, steamroll you very quickly. Lee Kendrick is with us. He's with Credit U-Turn here on AM 950 KPRC. When they put together your FICO score now, uh, you know, take us, has the criteria changed? Uh, I know there's a certain kind of percentage that credit companies use as far as, you know, paying bills on time, available credit, all those types of things. They put this little formula together to determine your FICO score. Um, has that changed at all over the course of the last few months? Um, I wouldn't say that that's changed. Every lending institution, um, even though there's a, a formula, an algorithm that's uh, provided to them by FICO, um, these uh, credit card issuers, your lending institutions, your auto lenders, mortgage lenders, they all have tailor-made formulas. They all have certain levels of risk that they're looking at, and sometimes they even utilize their own internal scoring uh, systems that are like on a zero to 100 scale. So, you know, there's um, every lender um, could look at your score a little bit differently as far as where it falls um, in line with, like, certain uh, acceptable levels of risk to them. And then you also need to remember, too, that a score is not a score that's static. It's constantly in flux. It's very dynamic. Just the smallest changes of data, it could be that all of a sudden you've got a misspelled name that's reported, and all of a sudden it can ding your credit score or improve your credit score and uh, a credit inquiry. It could be a limit change. It could be just a new date of activity. Anything that reports and your score's constantly changing. So um, it, it's, a, it's a game. Uh, I actually wrote a book called The Credit Score Game, and uh, it's not your fault. And, um, you know, it, it explains and rolls, uh, pulls back the curtain a lot more about uh, what, how the credit agencies utilize your data. And, um, you know, they're basically you're the, you're the uh, merchandise. Uh, it's your data that they're selling. It's your data that they're reselling back to you. Not your fault, <laughs> but unfortunately you pay the price. You know, one of the things I've always been curious about, because you have all these different um, credit reporting agencies that all come up with their own scores. So your FICO score is a combination of, of, of a variety of different agencies, correct? Your FICO score is a combination of what now? Of There's, there's a whole bunch of different companies that give you a score. So you, your score may be one thing on one agency and one thing on another agency. Isn't the FICO score sort of a combination of multiple different reporting groups? Well, so your data can vary from uh, repository to repository, and FICO generates a score uh, that's based upon whatever formula that they're using. There are a few formulas that are in place from each of the, uh, I think, uh, and don't quote me on this, but I think it's 14 or 16 formulas exist right now, so then you can have derivatives of that. And then you also have the Vantage score, and Vantage score, they came out with 2.0. I think most places use 3.0. They are already rolling out 4.0. And usually whenever they roll out the newest scoring models, most all of the lending institutions don't really adopt those um, permanently for a year or two just because they want to statistically see how it stands up according to their um, uh, level of defaults that they in, um, encounter over the next year or two. Um, so you might, whenever you apply for a loan, they might be looking at one mainstream score plus also comparing it to a uh, future uh, potential score uh, model as well as their own internal algorithms. All right. Is there a consensus at this point, Lee Kendrick, as to what – an excellent credit rating is what a good rating is, et cetera. Is there is there a set amount, or does that seem to vary a little bit from from group to group, institution to institution? It's going to vary by loan type, whether or not it's mortgage, auto, personal loan, or credit card, and then it's going to vary depending upon the institution. But typically speaking, seven twenty and up is often the excellent. There are some credit card issuers and other uh, little um, niche. Uh, lenders out there right now that are looking at 740 and even 760 and above are what it takes to get that uh, triple A plus rating or what they would call A1 or, or or like a super A. Okay. Very good. So that's what you want to shoot for, 760 or better. Pretty much. I mean, and, and right now, especially during this pandemic, you're seeing that, you know, that old adage, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's the same yep. thing with credit scores. Uh, they've adjusted their algorithms and the way things are working right now. We're seeing that the credit score rich are getting richer 
and then credit score poor or getting poorer. So the, the middle range of scores is diminishing somewhat. They're either falling to the left or they're falling to the right. Okay. You want to follow to the right because that'll have everything to do with what you pay in interest rates and everything else. Lee Kendrick, thanks for your time today. Appreciate the education very much, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. With credit, you turn Lee Kendrick here on AM 950 KPRC and the Jimmy Barrett Show.